Good evening, everybody. This is uh, Monday, seminar number 16, the ongoing and exceptional McLuhan on Maui uh, conference, and uh, get the show in motion. He talked about the the uh, uh, the high-rise building is the social, is the anti-social monster, and the ghetto is the social monster. And he says the, the, the epitome of being a nobody, no matter how much you own or how wealthy you are, he says you end up being a hotel hermit, like Howard Hughes. That's right. That's right. Yeah. He's a hotel hermit. And he goes on about that's the fate of everybody. That's the early conditions of uh, being in the Matrix, like in the movie, isolated. You know, when you're in the ma in Matrix and you're in, you have your own tube, you're, you're a closet recluse. But the, he saw Howard Hughes as an early indicator, figure of that. And then he loved the fact that Irving wrote a fake biography on the guy. <laughs> you remember that, 1971, the, the Clifford Irving hoax? So yeah, Howard Hughes is a major figure. This is what, see, this is the thing, Marshall, whatever became the big news, like the word that makes the market from the Beatles on, and Elvis before, he knew that that was the poetry. He knew that was the real sign of what was going on, and he would read those signs. So it wasn't that he was interested in pop culture. He knew that the interest in Howard Hughes was a figure for the effects of uh, the instant replay over the global theater in 1970. You, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. But remember what Marshall says in 1945-46. He assesses the effect of the atomic bomb. He says the people that the worst, the people who are most vulnerable to the effect of the atomic bomb are going to be the artists because they have big egos and they are going to not like the corporatization, the annihilation of the private creative impulse. Did you you know that sentence? Yeah, I do, and and uh, I agree with them. I think that as soon as we realized that we were competing with instantaneous electronic uh, media, uh, I think that we really lost uh, a great deal of self-esteem when it came, came to human creativity. Yeah, and then it became a cliché ghettoization of the creative impulse, and, and Thompson calls it the planetization of the esoteric. The very artists, the Jackie Burroughs and that, who become figures of dismay and fragmentation, is the final close of the emperor. That's the final, like he has in Cleach Archetype. <coughs> the artist is culture hero, identity. This is the interesting cultures are business themes, that the arts and tourism take over as a uh, last gasp of, uh, of uh, irresponsibility, shall we say. When Marshall says in his Playboy interview that the vortices hit on, that's Joyce Elliott, Pound and Lewis, hit on the key to the creative process and then replayed it back. They were like scientists looking at the artistic cliches. He then says that the, the managers on the United Nations level, uh, that book's Foundation of Social Survival, in that essay in 1954, Catholic Humanism, Modern Letters, he talks about they are taking the, the Joyce and the Vortices insight and applying it globally as social managers, and have now the process, they now know how to create society. So you got collective creation that has been cracked, and the code to private creation in a literate society. Those are what I think about, Scott, when you mention creativity. That's what I think of, Paul, when you bring up the uh, Joyce as being on the stamp of Ireland, and it's the content of a culture that ignored him when he was alive. Those are the issues that Marshall's wrestling with. That brings back Don Thiel. Now, you, he, he's very good at analyzing fitting into wake language, but what you have to notice is he, every book he analyzes the same passages every decade and, and just layers the decadal technology over his interpretation of uh, decoding and recording. You know, the famous line that's even in the medium is a massage. He takes key quotes, especially 614, of Finnegan's Way, page 614, and he repeats every few years in his books a deeper analysis of it, but he sticks with the same quotes. That's what's interesting. So he is excellent on Joyce, but he publicly limits what he offers, and he'll purposely repeat sentences in his books. He'll repeat whole paragraphs. You read 100 pages later, there's the same paragraph done uh, from you know 100 pages before. It's like, oh, bad editing. They repeat it. I asked him, and he said, no, no, I, I have that in there on purpose. He's a minimalist also in his criticism. So Don Fields, uh, what, what my criticism of Don is that he was a POB. He was looking for the art object to have everything. 
He got mad that, that McLuhan simplified Joyce. But Joyce, but McLuhan had the guts to say, Finney's Wake is just a product of the radio era. As, it, as McLuhan says about I.A. Richards' depth criticism, it's just depth of response to radio. 